Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Break It Dawn. Let's level up. Athletics and insight on our main character. Alright, so I don't know if I want Glorious Beacon or Flame Shield. I'm leaning towards Flame Shield. We can always grab Glorious Beacon later. Alright, Aloth gets Mechanics and Bluff. So I may end up grabbing Confusion on my main character as well, since we're focusing so much on illusions. Let's grab Wall of Flame. So I can't grab that on my main character, since he can't use Conjuration spells. My right, Palagina, Athletics, and Intimidate. Uh, let's get the upgrade to Gurnus Clue the Beast, but soon face its kin, and their screams reach the heavens. So worms are more powerful and have unique attacks. Jodi, Arcana, and Religion. She learns Minor Intercession. Calls upon the aid of the priest god, restoring health and reducing durations of negative effects for all allies in the area of effect. I'm going to grab this. Spell resistance grants a chance to completely resist the effects of a hostile spell. Should stack with her lantern, giving her 18%. We get one more. Salvation of Time besieges the gods for more time, extending the duration of all beneficial effects on allies in the area. Spiritual Ally summons an extra planar ally loyal to the priest. And Pillar of Holy Fire summons a flaming pillar of righteous anger, burning everyone in the air of effect. Not just foes, so let's be careful with that. Uh, we could grab Revive the Fallen. But the summon does sound handy. Let's grab that. Alright, Nadir gets Athletics and Streetwise. I would have a few options here. I'm going to go ahead and grab Penetrating Strike. The fighter strikes their target with devastating force, gaining significant additional penetration during the attack. I do want to give him a different damage type. This has slashing and piercing. So we'll go with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? 
Not sure when that happened. Sure. Okay, we'll head to the Wild Mare, we'll rest up, and then we'll leave the city. Explore the surrounding island. We do have a good amount of money as well. There are a couple weapons I was interested in buying. Uh, there's the Arbalist. I think it's sold in Pariki's Overlook. And the Blunderbuss in the Brass Citadel. Oh no, I meant to go to Preaky's Overlook instead. The Arbalist had a really cool effect, and be really good on Jody. Looking for a pistol or an Arkham? Oh, it wasn't a Blunderbuss, it was an Arquebus. I feel like that would synchronize really well with a Paladin build that leans heavily into fire damage. Which, coincidentally, I like to do with my Paladin builds. I want to say this Arvalos was like 20,000. But we may be... Getting a larger discount since we've done some bounties. Our reputation has gone up. If you need iron or steel. Yeah, Spearcaster. Yeah, 50% chance to knock back and daze target when scoring a hit. And it scales with Arcana, the range accuracy does. We can't quite afford it. Subtle indeed. It is done. Subtle indeed. It is done. That's right, don't really care for that shield. It's meant for a monk anyway. You see anything? Yeah, we'll do the private dance room. It's relatively cheap, and it's a decent buff. I don't want to spend this much. Yeah, minus 5%. Yes, yeah, so I think I was right. Uh, the... Arbalist was 20,000, but we had a discount. I forgot to check when we were at the merchant herself. Hey, Palagina. I know you're kind. You can't have children. But we 
Would you have wanted them? Ah. It is because I cannot give my country children that I give them so much of the life I have. When I was younger, I took it for granted I'd have them one day. <laughs> Free labor. But a lot of time passed before I knew it. Hardly gave it a thought until now. You are not getting any younger. I know you do not like thinking, Adair, but maybe it's time to start. <laughs> Fresh fruit. We have Weber O Tangaloa. I'm assuming this is just a dialogue area. Head right there. Wana tribes traditionally heap their dead onto pyres or give their bodies to the deep sea. The mounds like these suggest that Rangas of honor, wealth, and distinction were buried nearby. While wandering the Deadfire countryside, you stumble upon a site used frequently for ritual cremations. Beside the flat expanse of earth where a pyre might have been sits a small crypt full of beautiful baskets containing cremated remains. Search the location. You take some time to search the burial site. And find an offering of coins near the remains. I keep searching this location. You continue poking around the burial site for anything useful. I find a charming trinket wrapped in dried grasses. Plus one to intellect and resolve. Really good for a paladin. I uh, keep searching this location. You continue poking around the burial site for anything useful. I find a weapon beside the remains. You've rummaged through the whole burial site. There's nothing left but the dead. Probably a little disrespectful to be taking through there. Dead's remains right next to the capital. Alcadu's canopy. You're cutting your way through the dense, hilly jungles to the west of Nakataka when you stumble upon a small campsite. At first, it merely appears abandoned. The two tents present are present have collapsed. But then you see the bodies. Two corpses, torn apart and mostly eaten, sprawl across the dark earth. Search the area. The campsite has been thoroughly destroyed. The tents lie crushed as if under some great foot. A kettle rests on its side, very nearly caved in, and the fire has been stomped out. The bodies, what's left of them, bear the tattered remnants of the robes and holy symbols of the Dawn Stars. A handful of arrows pincushion the trees to the south of the camp. Where they've struck the trunks, the bark bears a thin layer of ice. It's slowly melting in the warm tropical air. The trees to the south hunch bent aside, as if whatever caused this carnage came from and left by that direction. Examine the tracks. Yeah, we don't have very good survival. Each print is about as large as a pie, and roughly the same shape. Search for the presence of spirits. You focus your watcher abilities, opening yourself to the presence of any lingering essence. A vision tugs at you, dragging you forward like the rushing current of a flooded river. You see the creatures, nigh twice the height of a human, standing among the ruins of your campsite, eating the corpses of your fellows. Vines and moss hang from their amorphous, bark-covered form. Lurkers. Waves of anger and fear wash over you. Anger and fear, but also faith in Aethys returned, and with a prayer in your lips, you fire arrows from your enchanted bow, each as cold as sleet. You hear a rushing sound to your right, and turn to face it. The vision ends abruptly. Search for salvage. 
A few hides, antlers, and other trophies lie around the camp. A small chest buried in the collapsed tent contains a variety of fresh foods. Alright, finish investigating. Having finished looking over the camp, take a step back towards the path. I want to put that lamp of yours to use, Jody. Rest now, my brethren. I promise, I will safeguard your journey. Head bowed, Jody sways her lantern for a long while in harvest, providing ample time for the missionary souls to accept the pull of the light. Do Aothasians burn or bury their bodies? Let's go ahead and burn them. Burn the bodies. Okay, they liked it, so. Uh, you collect and wrap the remains, then gather tender and kindling to build a small bonfire. As the bodies burn, you try not to breathe too deeply of the smoke from the smoldering flesh. Adair's eyebrows rise high on his forehead. He smiles crookedly. And Jody grins, wide and slow and easy. Now that somebody's watching over them, even if it isn't necessarily Aethys. I appreciate you doing this. Adair nods at you. And the cycle continues. But the body is thusly shucked. The soul will find its way to a new beginning. Jody bows her head. Palagina shakes her head and adjusts her clothing. Follow the tracks. The creatures seem to have put no effort into hiding their tracks and you easily follow them deeper into the jungle. The path enters a clearing, and you must walk into it without recognizing the danger. From the edge of the foliage, you see numerous lurkers among a few bulbous dank spores. The primordials remain almost entirely still, seeming no more threatening than the trees that surround them. Uh, sneak closer. Aloth leads you silently through the undergrowth. Let's see what I can find. All this chasing after Aethys. It's brought back memories of the Saints' War. It's not a great time for conversating, but sure. Uh, tell me. Just how scared everyone was, mostly. Everybody put on a brave face, made all these claims about what they'd do when they met a god in battle. And there was no sadder sight than a group of us talking big, trying to outdo one another. He chuckles. Even the fellow that led us, he used to say he knew all these different ways you could kill a god, if you were so inclined. Of course, at night he grind his teeth so hard it sounded like he was chewing rocks. In case you were curious if he really had it in him. He shrugs. I sympathize. My teeth are probably worn down to nubs by now. We'll probably both have some scary looking smiles before long. Point being, the prospect of facing the god makes cowards of most all of us. Now here I am again, on my way to meet Aethys. His eyes flick upward, either a gesture toward the dawn stars or an eye roll. Some ways I feel the same, edgy, sick in my gut, but it's different this time. <laughs> Might be because of you. It's half muttered, spoken not quite in your direction. And how's that? We haven't gone to pieces yet, for one thing, at least not on the outside. You could have let it all end back at Cadnua, or even Gilded Vale. But you're still going, even knowing where we're headed. Haven't forgot who you are. There's part of me thinks we aren't going to make it out of this. When I get to thinking like that, it helps to remember how you've held together. 
And what do you think? We gonna survive all this? He asks it with a smile, but it fades fast. Honestly, I like option one. Option six is also really good. We've made it this far. I think there's a chance. I'll take that over the alternative. And I've been learning to give you the benefit of the doubt. And I go back and forth myself. Every time we see one of those big footprints, it reminds me not to get too excited. There's a good chance we die out here halfway across the world from anywhere I ever called home. Adair's eyes trace a nomadic path as he looks at your surroundings, seeming never to find a comfortable place to settle. But if I can face it like you, maybe it doesn't matter. He gives you a quick nod. Some of the tension in his face seems to recede. Not gonna flirt with him. Uh, it's been good having you along. I mean it. Don't know where I'd be right now if you hadn't come through Gilded Vale that day. You'd probably be in the tree, unfortunately. I'll tell you what, though. I'm not one for big promises. He puts a hand on your shoulder and looks you dead in the eye. But I'm gonna beat up as many people and monsters as it takes to get you your life back. You got my word on that. He smiles with one side of his mouth and gives you two heavy swats on the shoulder that reverberate up and down your spine. Thanks, buddy. Okay, let's swap Watcher, out our- I was wondering if I could run something by you. <laughs> now, it's not a great time, guys, but okay. Uh, what's on your mind? Well, to put it simply, you are. She swallows thickly. I've tried, but I can't get you out of my thoughts and dreams. Yeah, what does that mean? Forgive my audacity. I know I've got no place to, but I care for you more than I can rightly say. Fingers trembling. She wipes her damp palms on her tunic. I was wondering if you might return the sentiment. I thought you were interested in Adair. I thought I was too at first, but somewhere along the way, well, I realized he wasn't the one making my heart stutter. I don't look up to him like I do you. She wets her lips. And he sure doesn't make me sweat like you do. So I wasn't planning on pursuing a romance, especially with her. I was trying to have her and Adair pursue a relationship. Because it seemed like they were going to. I don't know if I turn her down now, if she still will. I don't know if I want to burn this bridge. Fine. I've always been here for you, Jody. You have. I know you have. It's just that... She glances down shyly. The truth is, I was afraid to want you. I didn't think the Watcher himself could be interested in me. When you think about it, how powerful you are compared to me, it doesn't hardly make any sense, does it? I'm almost afraid to believe it, that you would want me just as much and fierce. Jody ducks her head, that fails to hide the blush and, smi and the smile that spread across her face. But darned if it doesn't make me so very, very happy. Uh, tuck a loose strand of her hair behind her ear. An easy, confident grin glides over Jody's face, revealing her straight white teeth. There's a tip of her tongue over those pearly teeth, touching a canine thoughtfully before she slowly, carefully entangles her fingers with yours. Pupils blown, she inhales a breath. I'm gonna make you so glad you picked me, Watcher. You'll see. She rocks forward and then touches her lips to yours. She nuzzles gently once, twice, back and forth before opening to you on an exhale. Her eyes sliding closed as she deepens the kiss. Mm. You taste like forgotten dreams. Like fate. She pants softly after, eyes opening in a wash of awe. Alright, let's go. Ready and willing. She salutes you with a grin. Huh? I really feel like I should have turned her down.
All right, let's finally right. engage these guys. Right. Oh gosh, there's a lot of them. I am ready. Let's go. I believe. <laughs> Okay, somehow I ended up all the way back here. I think not. Alright, can I mess him up? Palagina. This guy has a heal spell and corrosive breath. Everybody. And so they cut through their front line and get to their back line. Yeah. That's not very helpful. I'll deal with this one. I can't hit all of them. Uh, I can't hit two. Take 
this fight being very difficult you come here a little earlier <laughs> what on it frost seeker it's a war bow exceptional garland's tears are as multiple projectiles that slightly reduce damage plus 10 percent freeze it damage is freeze and garland's rake a free slash damage aoe at target location on scoring crit Seems really good. Uh, the ranger Alice of the Black Wood acquired this bow from a vagabond mage after she and her weasel companion Lysa, or Lisa, uh, rescued the man from the captivity of Garland the Ice Troll. The mage used the troll's dying tears to infuse the bow with the power to shoot arrows of enchanted ice. From that day forth, Alice was never seen on patrol without the bow in hand. Upgraded for Garland's breath. Calls forth the breath of the Ice Troll Garland, attacks enemies in a cone, dealing freeze damage, encasing them in ice, and petrifying them. Seems pretty good. Does Adair have a Warbow modal? He does. I? Oh, oops, I didn't pick it up. <laughs> oh? I've got it. Trixie? While Trixie is following you around, you move more quickly in combat, and your party will crit more frequently with weapon attacks. Oh, welcome I? to the party, Trixie. So I'm assuming that's it for this area. Also, my main character is invisible. I also have this cloak. What do I currently have equipped? Oh, the same thing. Congratulations, Palagina. You also get it. What now? All right, I'm going to call it here. Our next episode, we'll continue exploring the island around Nekataka. I noticed the corpse there. That must be the dead Dawnstar. Yeah, that's the plan for next time. Continue exploring the island. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.